Hi, everybody. It's Andre from the Eaglesoft Field Guide. I'm here with some friends of mine, which I love doing. I love talking to, to friends. Uh, Todd Garfinkel and Char Cheryl Garfinkel, they're with DDS Match, but they also used to be my neighbors. They used to live right near me, and now they've left me in the state of Pennsylvania, and now you guys are in the state of Maryland, right? Yeah, yeah, we're in Annapolis. So tell me about the, the territory you guys cover. DDS Match is a national company, so what, what's your sort of neck of the woods? So our footprint is specifically Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. We we have a focus footprint up in Northern Virginia, but we do take care of clients throughout the state of Virginia. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you know, so everybody knows these guys have been friends for, geez, I mean, 15 years plus, yeah, you know. 20 years. I mean. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's great to connect. And, uh, you know, we, we work together at Patterson Dental. So we have that, that connection and we've been friends forever. And like I said, neighbors, like literally, we almost could walking distance apart. So this is great to kind of get together and talk about like what's going on in the world. I mean, right now we're recording this at the end of April, um, right after we've been out of dentistry for pretty much a month, a month and a half. Yeah. Um, you know, the date that I've kind of put in the sand is uh, March 17th is kind of my like 9-11 day. Us as well. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what I, you know, what I wanted to talk to these guys about is what we are seeing out there with transitions. I mean, that's a big part of that. That's primarily what you guys do. And what do you guys see on the buyer side? What you guys see on the seller side? What you hear like going on in the market? Um, you know, I, I hear things from staff members. Uh, now, with what's going on with staff members being you know, furloughed, I'm hearing from doctors more. Um, it's been interesting. But what are you guys hearing like from your doctors, from your buyers and sellers? What are you hearing about the, sure. the temperature of things? Yeah. Um, you know, we're actually having a fair amount of conversations. We're, 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 uh, a lot of buyers are in touch. Um, a lot of sellers, I think, are reevaluating their lives, their their position. Um, we only represent sellers mm -hmm. in transitions, um, but we do a lot of work with buyers, trying to understand, you know, what their what their vision is, what they're looking for, what their ideas are, and then working hard to make a match and all that. So we do op keep the channels of communication open to to buyers as well as as our clients, the sellers. Um, I think, you know, right now it's a time where buyers are, you know, if they're associates currently, they're, they've got time to reevaluate. Mm -hmm. They might be, you know, we're, we're hearing things like they're, they're reevaluating going back to the position they were in, where they're at the mercy of somebody else and, and being furloughed or being let go versus taking the time to evaluate and, and dive into the idea of being a practice owner. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a, a, really across the country with all of our associates, mm -hmm. a lot of activity from buyers saying, hey, you know, this is, I think this might be the time for me to, to look for a practice. And there's potentially going to be some deals to be had during a short period of time while there are a number of sellers looking to, to make a transition and um, there's uncertainty in the market. Yeah. Um, so from a seller's point of view, um, you know, as you can imagine, so these sellers, some of them are getting a taste of what it's like to not go to the office every day <laughs> and not grind from eight till six at night on, you know, four days a week clinically and maybe another day administratively. And and they're uh, reassessing the balance of life. And they're, they're saying, you know, I was thinking about doing this anyways in the next six months, next 18 months. Let's take a look at what it would be like now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for us, Andre, we're, we're real big fans. Um, and I know you're a big fan of having a plan. We're big fans of talking to people way ahead of time, sometimes five years ahead of time. In fact, that's what we would prefer is to talk to people uh, five years before they start down the road of actually transitioning their practice. And in this time, in this kind of a crisis situation, you know, we're, we really are endorsing that even, even more strongly so that we're, we're encouraging people, if they have this on their mind, to stop, 
contact the advisors that they trust or start to build a team of advisors that they trust, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a transition specialist, maybe a lawyer, their accountant, mm -hmm. CPA, consultant, mm -hmm. um, and start to explore that idea of what it would look like to transition, you know, of course, taking into account this kind of a, a setting situation. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that um, buyers are reassessing is what is it going to take what kind of effort do i need to put in to bring my office back up to a potentially new standard and wondering is this something i really want to invest in and how is my staff going to react do i have the energy do i have the the wherewithal to do that or is it time for me to even though i love doing dentistry this part of it may not be worth it in that cost balance of life and relearning um, new new protocols with sellers. Like, yeah, sellers. With sellers. Yeah, 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 specifically with sellers. So, yeah. and then I think as our buyers, they they see opportunity and they know that this is going to be uh, potentially a V-shaped curve, and they have mm -hmm. opportunity to move outside of, as Todd mentioned, the associateship and go into ownership and and sell forward in in their vision of that as well. So. Yeah, and do you guys see? I mean, and again, we've been doing this for a while, so we've seen yeah. sort of the the arc in. Yeah. Uh, you know, trend and who are our doctors, um, what the what the expectations for ownership is like, you know, um, are you seeing trends uh, with new students uh, who are looking to buy as opposed to looking to be associates? And I, I, this is going to change a lot, I think, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're starting to see that line blur a little bit. You know, it was much prior to COVID-19. I think for us, we were experiencing typically a new grad going into residency, even then coming out and having, you know, getting some experience under their belt before they decide to sort of pull that trigger or look at pulling the trigger for practice ownership. Starting to see that line blur just a little bit for sure. That's that's interesting that, that you picked up on that. Are you hearing are you hearing different pieces of that as well? Yeah. And and again, you know, there are a lot of people who are reassessing selling, which means there are practices that are now sort of dangling that weren't available before, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, like you said, I think a lot of people looked at this and went, wow, I didn't realize, you know, I, I had a doctor who probably after about three weeks of being out of the office said, I can't believe how much less my overhead is. I mean, it's <laughs> sad to say, but how much less my overhead is. And right. then realizing maybe when I come back into the office, I can be leaner, meaner, I can do some things differently. And I think that's a big part of what we're seeing in, in the field. It's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, I would, you know, I wanna, it's really interesting that you said that because I was thinking the other day, it's really a time, I think, for, for practice owners to take a good look at how they're running their business, to, to work with somebody such as yourself or, mm -hmm. or, you know, other advisors, team members, if you would, they can, can guide them and give them real clear direction on becoming lean, becoming mm -hmm. more system driven, um, you know, looking at what sort of money is being left in the table that they, they should be gathering and collecting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time to become uh, more efficient in, in the business side. And, and we know typically um, dentists are not, not that business oriented. And, and that stems, I think, all the way back to school, mm -hmm. you know, not having a lot of business uh, business education in, in dental school. Yeah. But well, one of the things I was saying in, in another interview that I did uh, was I think this is the first time that dentists have begun from becoming the CTO, the chief technology operator, you know, to becoming the, the chief financial operator. They're, right. They've had to make this transition. And even if they had an accountant or whatever who did the books for them, this right. is the first time they really had to dig in. That's for my side of things, people saying, hey, Andre, I didn't, I've never had to run a report before. How do I do this out of the other <laughs> thing? And now they're seeing the report we're printing going, how does this connect with that? And what's going with that? Um, I actually, I literally, as soon as I, before I, I got on the call with you guys, um, I had a doctor who uh, had to reach out to, um, I don't know if you guys know David Harris from Prosperident, who mm -hmm. only does uh, embezzlement and fraud investigations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden the light comes on and now you see the cockroaches, you know, living in your basement. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been a different uh, situation for a lot of the business owners. And yeah. it's just funny, now we can start calling these the dentists the business owners. Um, right. So, well, uh, you, 
I was going to say also just on, to add to that, I think not only just how to run a report and to understand the practice management side of it, but also as they're applying for PPP and all the different loan opportunities that are potentially out there, that they've had to dive in and really understand uh, their overhead, their cash flow, mm -hmm. and, and how that equates to their business and maybe seeing some numbers that they hadn't fully understood because they're doing dentistry, yeah. you know, to their... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a hard business. And, you know, I, I, I tell everybody and they're like, wow, you know, what you do all day long with training and all that kind of stuff is, you know, being on a plane. And I think to myself, I would never want to sit chair side and do what you do. That is just <laughs> the hardest job I could imagine. Right. We've so, talked about that before. Yeah, yeah I, I love what I'm doing part compared to that. Now, one of the things that you said that I thought was really cool. Now, putting together, you know, uh, advisors is something I always think about. And I, and I, I think, Again, going back to dentistry is a really hard job and you're pretty much doing it alone and you're doing it from sun, sun up to sundown, coming home and, you know, and having to deal with the, the family life. Um, what do you guys see as like the sort of best combination of advisors? I mean, lawyer, because and again, you're going to see people as they transition out, as they transition in. What do you see like as a good sort of mix of advisors? Like what, you know, generally what titles? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. you know, I think the typical team that we see is going to be a CPA mm -hmm. that they, that, and, and this would go for all of the advisors that they're working with. They need to click with them. It needs to be a good, good fit, a good vibe, a good relationship, and they need to be able to trust their advisors. CPA, uh, a lawyer for when you need a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? It's not somebody you're going to be working with regularly. Um, a consultant we find is key. We're not, you know, everybody has a different view on consulting, but I think especially right in this, this time period, um, you know, to have kind of a specific target relationship with a consultant, not something that you're going to miss necessarily be involved with for five or 10 years, but right now in the next six months, the next 12 months, the next 18 months, mm -hmm. you know, get involved with a consultant that is business oriented that can help you through that learning curve and understanding how's your business running where where are the loose pieces that you can tighten up um, to get the most out of it you know if we look back at 2007 2008 you you know we both experienced that there were offices that had some of the best years they had following 2007 2008 because um, they were in the they, they were in the right mode, they had the right mentality, yep. they had a good system, and they kind of flipped a few switches and adjusted slightly, and were able to really take advantage of of the market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I gotta slip this quote in because I love it from Warren Warren uh, Buffett. I think it goes something like, "You know who's skinny dipping when the tide goes out, <laughs> right?" So that's awesome. This is this is a time when um, you know, there, there are things that we could have perhaps let slip in our practices previously that now, man, they're coming to light and they're coming up strong and, and it right in front of our face and we've got to deal with them. Yeah. 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 And I think also a couple of things is, is, is there, as doctors are looking to bring on trusted advisors, um, that they're dental specific because it is a unique business and it is something that they want to have somebody that understands the uniquenesses of dentistry, um, especially, um, co well, consultants are obvious, but per perhaps lawyers and accountants. Mm -hmm. um, and there's good resources out there. And as you have one, I'm sure for you, you probably have a, an arsenal of people that if a doctor asks you that you can say, hey, if you need a good dental lawyer, here's, here's a couple names to call, give yeah. them a call, interview them and see if they're a good fit for you. Same with CPAs. One of the things that we're also really recommending doctors do as, as they're tightening their belts and looking at ways to streamline is to really go to some of the basic basics as when was, you know, do I participate with insurance? Mm -hmm. um, do I want to continue participating at the same rate that I am? If I, if the answer is yes, that I do, when's the last time I um, managed my fees? Um, have they, have I done an increase? Should I renegotiate with the insurance companies? How do I go about doing that? It, uh, do I need to bring in an in-office membership plan because mm -hmm. there is no longer dental dental benefits or what we call the dental coupon? <laughs> um, and really take some hard looks at that um, and understand what they can do and what that actually does to their bottom line, working smarter, not harder. They don't have to see more patients. They're actually getting better reimbursement. We saw today some, some reports where... Ugh. 
it was a like a million to production with a five hundred thousand dollar write off. It, yeah. it just it, it just yeah it was forty three percent write off. Yeah, it was yeah. just right. that's a, that's, a lot, that's a yeah. lot to pay for patients, but yeah. And you know, you know, a lot of times that is, you know, that the, that's ego driven. You know, sometimes I, I always used to say, you know, what you what you put in your bank account is what your fees are, and what you put on your price tags is your ego. <laughs> you know, you got a twelve thousand dollar crown, but you get seven fifty from the insurance. You know, so you know, it's there's there's a there's a balance that needs to be done right. and i get i get i would assume that's part of like your five year plan your roadmap when you're working right. with somebody over that period of time to make to come up with some real uh, ideas of where we need to be also to make the practice no 100 percent active yeah you know, i should add because I, I don't want it to come across the wrong way yeah. we listen we, we don't judge the insurance or no insurance one way or the other you know it, it's a model that works for a lot of people sure it's just startling when you see somebody working so hard and giving away 40, 45% of the fee that they're charging. So that's, that's a tough part, but I got, it. man, it's so great that you brought up the in-office membership because, you know, really as we're looking at the landscape of what's happening as the dust starts to settle, I think we're going to see people that are going to have to pull out of dental insurance and pull back. And what an opportune time to bring in an in-office membership plan plan for a set fee. I don't know if you have opinions on that. Or I love them. I think any, any office that I work with, and I, I, I did one yesterday for an office, I, I think it is the best opportunity. And again, coming out of this, you're going to find that a lot of people don't have coverage. You know, mm -hmm. they've gone on furlough or something like that, and they've lost coverage. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming back. And you know, as somebody, as a recovering front desk person, you know, <laughs> you know I, I hear people all the time saying, you know, calling into the office and saying, what plan should I buy? Well, yeah. definitely the one that we're selling, you know, yeah. uh, you definitely don't want to buy a, a plan that's going to cost you, you know, $300 a year, which then tells you, you can't have an implant or you can't right. have that. You can only have a partial venture. So when we build these plans around the office, we can have anything we want and build all kinds of things into it. So mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of, of membership plans. I think that is the the, the path of the future for yeah, this. I, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. One, one other uh, advisor or team member that I would bring up that it, it might be an opportune time for many right now um, is, is somebody who can negotiate leases. So, you know, it, it, especially in this uh, environment, things are shifting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there might be an opportunity to, to gain a little bit on lease lease agreements in terms um, you know there are there are professionals that focus on dental uh, practice leases um, when it comes to mine is car realty mm -hmm. um, good guys and they that's what they do and they actually uh, and they don't charge the the dentists that they work for it all comes out of the, the property management that's side. interesting I never thought about that side of things that's great yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so maybe you know especially is it being you know there's certain hard assets or excuse me certain hard expenses you can't get past right. and that's one of them right that's that's there no matter what and it's going to be so that might be an opportune time where um, property management is saying listen we, we really are having a hard time filling spaces right now mm -hmm. might even be a uh, uh, it might be a good time to negotiate yeah. uh, those terms and i will say to to add on to what todd is saying is i think within that as the dentist is maybe considering that is to say, how long do I want to be here? Mm -hmm. How, what is my, and that's where that five year, three year plan, let's not negotiate a 10 year lease when I'm only going to really realistically be here for three to five years. Let's maybe do a three year lease or five year lease because it, it sets up the buyer to be in a better position. It sets up the seller to be in a better position. And, uh, and hopefully it's a win-win and maybe even for the, you know, the, the property owner because they're getting that long-term tenant, which they love. So, yeah. um, again, that's, you know, both in the now and the future, those, those are uh, important yeah, considerations. Yeah, that's a great point. And in general, we find that property management groups love dentists. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just <laughs> solid. <laughs> Rarely are they an issue of any sort. Um, you know, the, the, from a, a financial point of view, they're, they're one of the lowest risks out there from a business perspective. 
Yeah. And so they're anxious to keep them in place. Yeah. And we know that it's really, really, really hard to move a dental office. So <laughs> usually when they're there, they're there for good. So yeah, I, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a really good point. And you know, I, have, I have a good friend who's a property manager. And one of the things he always says is, you know, I, I, I love when a dentist wants to move in because usually they're plumbing and they're not moving for a long time. Yeah. And if they're moving, typically somebody else is coming in and taking that space right. who's a dentist. So right. it's right. a good right. long-term lease. So, so tell me some of the other things that are going on with you guys and some of the things that you guys are seeing out there in the market and just what's going on with you guys. Um, can I, I, I just want to make one more point, yeah, maybe in, not outside of, outside of the lease, but one of the things that I think that it's an important place for office staff and doctors to think about re-ramping up their business. If they come back online, what is it going to take to get a patient to say, yes, I want to come in? And there'll be probably three different types of patients. There'll be patients that are just going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how long you were closed me on the first books and then the other ones that need to have some reassurance of ppes infection control protocols and in although it's very commonplace in the dental office to do what we do i don't think for the patient that they don't fully understand our understanding of cross-contamination and 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 infection control and sepsis management and so to really spell that out and to be it in a letter be it in a video be it a tour while a patient comes in, whatever they need to do to let their, their patients feel comfortable. Um, and of course, the third, the third group, I don't want to leave them out there like, yeah, I'm not coming in because I never really like to come in anyway. So <laughs> this is all the reason why not to. Right. But then the other piece, and they're going to need some specific marketing. Yeah, and, yeah. And really, it's, yeah. But I think the other thing that, that to, to speak to both dentists and staff is that they may need to be a little flexible in their hours and in the way that they work, that perhaps they come in on a weekend or if they're closed, if it's a Monday through Thursday practice that they are open on Friday or they expand their hours or uh, just in order to give some convenience because the people that are their patients and customers have been also furloughed potentially and to take time off work and to lose that revenue, it's just not going to be an option. I think that there's a good amount of people that are struggling and, and maybe to, to expand their thought, even though it may be short term, it'll help them in the long run. And it's a sacrifice probably worth making. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, and I think that, again, this is a new normal. This is the kind of things that we went through. And I, I keep looking at the, like, sort of the, as my career has gone from, you know, you know, Y2K and 9-11 and, you know, all the different things that we've gone through, but each new normal has set this tone. And, you know, you think about the AIDS epidemic and, Again, we had to focus on talking about sterilization and the way that we sterilize. You know, you think about uh, steri centers, you know, you think about how that became a focal point in the office. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a new focal point, not, not the steri center so much as the operatory being a steri center. Right. You know, those are the kind of things that now is it's the new normal. And we have to focus on that in our marketing and our way of, of doing things. And I think having the team, again, you know, not my word, I always use crew, but the team all on the same page. So that we're singing from the same hymnal. So we're giving the, the customers the, the same kinds of things, and yeah. that's a big part of this. Yeah, and and you know, I, a lot of the conversations right now with, and we're doing a lot of uh, communication with with clients, with buyers. We're just staying in touch with people. Um, right now, they're, they're they're starting to be, especially in Virginia, they're going to open up dental offices May first. Tomorrow. Okay. So they're starting to think about. How do we do this? You know, re realistically, how do we do this? Scram, we need to get PPE, even though they've been trying for three weeks or four weeks to, to get it. Um, working with their crew, with their staff, to, to get everybody on board with procedures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're kind of working through what is this going to look like, this new normal that we're entering. Um, did you want to answer? Yeah, that? no, I just think in thinking about that is, you know, that their, their, their distributor rep is a real good resource for them. And maybe that's something that, you know, somebody at the front desk or an assistant takes care of, whereas maybe now it's time for the doctor to actually have a, a conversation or relationship with, with their uh, rep who comes into the office where they buy their supplies in that they can give them some tricks of the trade of getting something, or they may have some resources or they may have some understanding because as, you mentioned first on is the doctor is 
a doctor of one who, unless he goes to some other sort of society meeting or whatever, he just has his head down or she has her head down doing dentistry and doesn't have resources, whereas this distributor rep is in and out of offices all the time and is, you know, staying on the cutting edge of what's available, what's required, and really reaching out to them and, and uh, asking for assistance would probably yeah. be advisable. And this is one of the things that I've seen over the, the you know, the course of, of, of my years in dentistry is the relationship that people had with manufacturer reps and, and supply reps. That relationship has changed over the years and yeah. it needs to get back tighter because I see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in all these Facebook groups and I'm seeing these doctors buying, you know, PPE from wherever, you know, getting shipments of these gray market <laughs> masks. And the funny thing is all these masks, I mean, I, I, I got a couple of N95 masks uh, recently and they fall apart. They're not something that you could oh. wear, you know, they're just cheaply made. And the funny thing is, I had I was in a conversation with a doctor and their Patterson rep yesterday, and the Patterson rep said, "I can't get you a level three mask right now, but I can certainly get you a level two mask and shields." And instead of the doctor going out and buying, you know, trying to source these level three masks, he said, "Look, this is what I can get you. Let me help you." And unless you have those conversations, you're really out there in the woods right now. So no, it's, no. it's a great opportunity to reconnect. Yeah, that's true. I, I you know I would say just to give a little perspective on what we're seeing specifically in the transitions market or what we think might happen. And again, this is with a lot of caveat of we're not sure, nobody's sure. You can you can read 20 different articles and get 20 different opinions right now. Um, but in talking to other industry professionals and, and watching endless webinars, <laughs> right? Um, there, you know, the, the it's not as though these patients are going to disappear right patients are coming back to the office we were just talking about it you know i know you have an 80 20 thought on it but patients are coming back so the underlying structure of what made the businesses successful and what they are are, are relatively still in place yeah. and so you know we we have a, a number of deals that were in in process and when this all happened and everything everything went on pause so the, the pause button Got, got pushed for sure. Um, you know, and of course, rightfully so, buyers are saying, hey, you know what, let's have a conversation about this because I need some reassurance about the value of this practice. And uh, and, and that's understandable. Sure. Uh, I think from the seller's point of view, typically they're, they're, they're thinking, no, I this is the value and this is what I want it to be. Yeah, they already <laughs> booked a tea time in Hilton Head. That's right. They're all <laughs> <laughs> they already got their their clubs and their bag ready to yeah. go. They're um, both they're both already. The uh, the key here is going to be flexibility. I mean, nobody needs to go back to to square one to to absolute scratch. Yeah. You know these these deals are in place. The the underlying value of the the practice is there. Um, there we're seeing and hearing a lot of comments and working with uh, um, performance clauses. So. Mm -hmm. The basic idea there is, hey, listen, we, we agree that the practice is worth worth this. We want the practice from the buyer's perspective, um, but we want some reassurance that it's going to come back to 75, 80, 85, 90 percent of where it was. So perhaps we look at some sort of creative solution where we stick some money in an escrow. Uh, we pay you the rest as we were going to and we proceed with the deal. We look at a timetable, whatever that might be, whether it's 90 days, four months, you know, five months, and we, we want to be back to a certain percentage of the prior year's performance or whatever benchmark is established. Mm -hmm. And that gives everybody reassurance. So, you know, I think there, there's going to be more, more involvement maybe from the seller side where they're, they get a little skin in the game. Maybe they're carrying a note. I know banks are kind of talking about that a little bit as to that would help out a lot. Um, so I, I think just from a pers overall perspective, both buyer and sellers, it's really going to be just a matter of being flexible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have heard this from a number of buyer reps. So, so again, we represent sellers, but we communicate a lot with buyer reps. And they, they often talk to their, their buyers about, listen, if you're going to be negotiating for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, think hard about what the long-term cost of that's going to be. Right. What you're buying here when you buy a dental practice is goodwill, right? You're buying the relationships, the relationship with the selling doctor, the relationship with the staff, obviously the relationship with the patients. 
you want that to be as healthy and as as happy as possible as you move forward and taking over that practice if somebody gets into the nitty gritty down in the mud wrestling over twenty or thirty thousand dollars which in, in all due respect is a drop in the bucket yeah. when you're looking at owning a practice 15 20 30 years you know you got to really think about what's the long-term effect in that so we're, we're hearing that even echoed now during this this uncertain time is you know yeah there's got to be flexibility but everybody's got to think about what's the end goal and how do we reach that and give yeah. everybody everybody should be in a win-win i mean we, we think of that no matter what what the circumstances are we're always after a win-win solution like mm -hmm. i said regardless of us representing sellers we think for everybody's well-being it's important to get to that that win-win solution well, and let, let's talk a, a couple of things in like bigger picture things. Um, you know, before 317, <laughs> you know, <laughs> did you guys see trends starting to happen? Did you see, you know, again, the course of my, my career, you know, I saw dentistry skew female, our doctors are female, uh -huh. you know, I, it, you know, that those changes happen. Um, you know, we, everybody is uh, always looking at the um, corporate dentistry changing the landscape of things. You know, were you guys seeing some things that were happening in dentistry before this happened? And do you see those things continuing? You know, what are, whatever you guys think, what, what are you guys thinking? Well, you know, the first one that comes to mind was it was clearly a seller's market. Okay. Especially in our area. Maryland, DC, and Virginia is very attractive to, to dentists and to younger younger dentists, especially. A um, lot of buyer interest in this area. I, we see that leveling off more. We see that becoming an equal market or even potentially a buyer's market in some fashion because of the shift. So I think that that is the first one that hops into my mind from a trend perspective. Um, we, we, you know, with regards to the corporate uh, steady growth we've seen over the last 10, 15 years uh, in, in recent, we saw it slowing down a little bit. Uh, the, the capital behind those ventures were, were hesitating and pausing and reevaluating, or at least it seemed that way to us. And even some of our colleagues around the country, they've actually, people, uh, some of the other DDS match people have been contacted by DSOs because perhaps they bought something and it wasn't as uh, profitable and now they're the dso is, is looking to offload it uh to a, a private private, private buyer like yeah. clean clean house a yeah bit. Yeah. yeah so maybe some of the the zest and of buying uh has waned a little bit with dso's which i think for todd and i are very very i could get on a soapbox on my uh, desire to maintain uh private dentistry and, and we're happy to see that maybe there's there is off of yeah, 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 and and I think uh, you know with this COVID nineteen situation, there's going to be opportunity for DSOs to sweep in and start uh, chasing practices a little bit stronger given that pause time. So yeah, um, other trends maybe with banks that's a good one to talk about. Yeah, what's happened uh, there with uh, money availability of money that, that... yeah, it, hugely available uh, up until three seventeen still very much available banks that we talk to they're open for business quote unquote mm -hmm. um there are some banks that are definitely putting in putting in restrictions even though that they're 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 waiting to waiting for business to pick back up and get into the game fully yeah. they're they're open for business so they're talking they're doing they're seeing you know taking care of due diligence or doing evaluations of practices and of buyers um, but they're putting in place um, caveats like performance, like I was just talking about performance um, standards. Like yeah. obviously the practice, they, most of them want the practice open and functioning before they're going to lend money. And, and that really comes just from now putting the buyer in a, an immediate risk situation. Sure. Um, you know, the different, without, without spe specifying lenders, there are some that are aggressively going after the market right now okay um, and then others even one of the biggest is on a, a much more conservative track yeah. um, but that's also a good trend because if the banks are ready to are ready to move that means it and again we talked about this you know dentistry is such a sort of a bulletproof in industry 
you know, it's, it's not going anywhere and it's, it's pretty consistent in growth and it's pretty consistent in return on investment. So it's one of those things that a bank, if you see the banks, if, if, if we saw that the banks were saying, no, we're not going into the dentistry market anymore, that's time to be afraid. Right. You know? It's true. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know you want to talk about it because you have some thoughts well, on that. Well, I just, I just think that one, you know, we've, as Todd alluded to, we've seen banks be on both ends of the spectrum to the point where um, allowing to, you know, six month deferments, additional working capital for buyers. So it's not a gloom and doom for buyers um, who want to invest in their long-term profession and, and life. So yeah, and they're, they're, they're in a lot of ways we, 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 under, we believe, and I think Cheryl believes it even stronger than I do that banks will probably be somewhat of the tip of the spear on this. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Andre, if they're willing to lend, then that means everything's good. Yeah. You know that the water is okay to go into. Um, the tide's rising. The, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna find that quote. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So we got a couple minutes, uh, about five minutes to to get into it. But I want to I want to find out from you guys. You know, and, and we get to talk every now and then. But I want to find out from you guys, like what what's what's the, the the best thing that's happening in the market. What's happening with you guys, and what do you see the trends happening? What's uh, <sighs> What's the lay of the land? What's the, you know, what's the forecast that you guys see and what's well, the time? And if you're okay with it, I'm going to turn the tables on you and ask mm -hmm. you kind of a, 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 your opinion on something. And it ties yeah. a little bit into what you're, you're yeah. asking. But w w I'm curious about your opinion on, on teledentistry. Uh, Where it, it, we're hearing a lot of talk about that. Um, just watched a, an ADA webinar that, that was heavily discussing the idea of, you know, what are the insurance companies going to do from a co point of view? Yeah. Where is this here to stay? Those things. What What are your thoughts? on? That? I don't think it's a good fit for dentistry, honestly. Um, you know, my dermatologist, you know, I, I, I got a thing right there on my nose. I talked to my dermatologist and just like we're having this conversation, I can go look and she goes, oh, yeah, here's an ointment you can get. I don't see us doing that in dentistry. Um, and I think it's a great value add. I think it's a great way for us to keep, like especially during this period of time, if somebody has pain and we have a conversation, I can say, that looks like something we can see you in a couple weeks for, and let's make sure you're on the schedule as soon as we get back open. It's a great way to keep the relationship open, but I don't see it as a, an income stream. I just, you know, for me, I don't see it. And the worst part is, no matter what the ADA or the insurance companies say, if we have this evaluation today, you're not going to get one in six months. You know, they're going to take yeah. from one to give to the other. And that's, you know, my opinion. But I, I know that with frequency limits, because what they're telling us is, yes, use the teledentistry code, but also use an emergency exam code in combination, mm -hmm. which means you now will not be able to get your periodic exam when it's time for your checkup in September. Uh, so it's a great idea. Uh, but yeah, I, I it's going to be backhanded. And I think it... it if they said, you know, during the period, if you had an exam while your office was closed, we're not going to count that towards your future exams. Mm -hmm. But they haven't said that. They just said, here's a code that you can use. But I don't know what's going to happen when we get back to September and we're billing for those periodic exams. Is this exa emergency exam going to count against it? And a lot of offices, I mean, a lot of plans only have two exams per year. They don't have any other leeway on that. So I think it's a great tool. I think it's a great way to start doing cosmetic consults. Um, but again, did anybody ever charge for consultations really, you All know, right. for the most part? Yeah. Um, I think it's a great way to be able to connect to patients. You know, part of what I've always taught my offices is in what I did at a, in a practice is if somebody said, you know, I'm having pain and we're new in the area. The first thing I would say to somebody is, um, would you like our doctor to call you back this evening and talk about it? 90% of the patients said, no, 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 I'll come in next week when you schedule me, that's fine. But the ones who said, wow, that's amazing, the doc yeah. will call me back. Yeah. And I see that for teledentistry being, again, it's just a way of value add for our practice. Right. But right. from an income stream, I yeah. just don't see it. Um, and I don't see where dentistry can do much through tele teledentistry. Right. Yeah. Roofing out through the Computer. That would be great, but the, the, you know, the, the, Cheryl, the hold the instrument like this. <laughs> so uh, as much as it's being touted and, uh, you know, a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon during this, I, I think they're going to wind up 
with patients calling in September with a denial yeah. and being very mad mm -hmm. that the doctor charged them for a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's the only problem I have with teledentistry. I think it's fantastic as a customer service person. I offer a, a trust building and, and you know, yeah. establishment. And, that yeah. and, and, it, and it popped into my mind because something you said earlier, and I wanted to mention, like kind of tag on to it. When, as dentists are starting to ramp back up and going into, you know, into seeing patients, I think that to reassure them with a a, a video, even if, it, even if it's a phone call and they take their phone and they say, hey, let me show you what we're doing to protect you. And they're walking around the office showing them odds and ends, mm -hmm. it's gonna go a long way. Oh yeah, yeah. and we know, we personally know doctors who we worked together with that we know this is the perfect way for them to touch the patients that they've worked with in the past. Yeah. You know, there, there are certain people who this is a great opportunity to even a post-op call to do it face to face mm -hmm. is a yeah. great opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's again, but they would have always done it that way, you know, and, but this is just a, another tool to be able to use it. So that's, that's where I see well, this going. And, and interestingly, just to, to speak to what you just said there a little bit, you know, I, I am of the age that, video conferencing is okay but after a month of it i'm like oh yeah whatever yeah. bring it on yeah. you know where our, our kids are very much like hey they prefer video calling over or zooming or whatever over a phone call and i think for those that, that hadn't dipped their toe in the water that this has been a really nice opportunity to, to get comfortable with it proficient with it and to actually maybe for their patients as you're saying post-op care you know yeah. checkups even if it's a a staff member to have that face-to-face -face contact because also it gives one more layer of not just a voice saying I'm fine, but you get a visual too. Yeah, um, yeah I was talking to somebody recently about teledentistry and talking about just what we're doing now with Zoom and this kind of stuff. And it, it, they they said something which was, I, I heard years ago and I didn't think about it this way, but you know, if you were born in 2002, uh, you've never lived in a world where you didn't have a African-American or a black president. Mm -hmm. You've never lived in a world where there were the World Trade Centers. And mm -hmm. you've never lived in a world where you couldn't pick up the phone and see grandma. <laughs> And that is a weird thing, you know. We don't we, we don't think like that, but uh, you know, it's it's second nature to be able to go. Oh, I want to talk to grandma. Hi, grandma. How are you? Yeah. You know, it's like if you were born when I was born, you go. Only Dick Tracy could do that. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, have a telephone that you could talk to somebody or the Jetsons. But so it's a whole different way, and we're going to transition our patients into that. Um, and what we're doing now with using iPads to check people in. This is going to be a big part of this and the dentistry is has changed dramatically so yeah I agree. so any final thoughts guys I, I want i want to get a couple things from you guys yeah. what's the best way to get in touch with you guys because that's one thing i want to make sure we do how to get in touch with you guys um and um some final thoughts uh well let's do the final thoughts and then we'll do the how to get in touch okay. so for for me a final thought is is in amongst this time where it feels a little um, uncertain and a little potentially pessimistic um, that we are actually seeing real positive things come in transition from both buyers, sellers, bankers, advisors. Everybody is on a real positive trajectory, not to be Pollyanna or pie in the sky, but that um, with due diligence and thoughtful moving, you know, forward motion, that it's something that a dentist can comfortably especially somebody that had wanted to sell and now thinks they're set back, you know, they just had to take 10 steps backwards. I just don't think that that's true. I think that maybe they'll need to work an extra few months, but it's not going to be an extra few years mm -hmm. to be able to see mm -hmm. and that they can carry forward with their plans. For those of dentists that um, have it rattling around in the back of their head in five or eight, or so 10 years, this hopefully is a wake up call to understand, hey, what do I need to know about my business? How do I need to streamline my business? How do I need to surround myself with good advisors and to be, be able to take those actions to be well prepared moving forward? Mm -hmm. And I would say, um, and this is alluding to, to or something you alluded to earlier, Andre, and that is, we, this is not the first crisis we've been through and that we've seen in the dental industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new kind of crisis, but it's certainly not the first. And 
you know, we look back and yes, it's a, a it can be a, a rough road to get there, but it always comes back and it always comes back strong, stronger than it was before. Um, and we're encouraging everybody we talk to to stay positive and not being Pollyanna about it, but to keep the, the positive in their, in their um, eyesight and not to, to get torn down by the what ifs, but really um, taking action helps with that a lot. And uh, as we speak to people, we're, we're talking about making plans. So not just try to have a reaction, a knee jerk to it, but actually setting some plans in place. Um, you know, they might have to adjust a little bit here and there, but actually get something in place so you have something structured to guide yourself um, by. And, and that comes from, from a, a, um, you know, a good team. You know, we, we look at what we do and a good transition is, is different than a good transaction. Sure. And we look at the, the good transaction coming from a good transition plan being in place. So that's where it goes back to the kind of the five year thing is yeah. we want this to ultimately be everything you want it to be when it happens, but we need a plan ahead of time in order to get us to that point. So yeah. just really stay positive the best we can. I, I agree. And I think, like I said, like we've been talking about, this is a bulletproof system that again, putting our ducks in a row, that five year plan, you're gonna you're gonna wind up with a bulletproof outcome. It really yeah. is. So yeah. so guys, I really appreciate it. Give me some info. I want to and I'm gonna make sure it goes down here on the bottom of the screen too. Give me some a website, give me your phone numbers, give me everything so sure. everybody sure. wants to get in touch with you. Sure. So to get in touch with uh we we both have email addresses. So Todd's is T Garfinkel at ddsmatch.com. Mine is S Garfinkel with then that would be E L, not L E. Uh at ddsmatch.com our website ddsmatch.com and we have a personal website as well but you can get to us in that method um todd's phone number is 443-422-9509 and mine is 443-422-9866 cool and i'll make sure that that's listed under our, our pictures here and uh I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me. Uh, too bad I can't walk over to the house and hang out with you. Uh, we'd love to have you. Yeah. I drove by your old house and it, it, it still looks great. So, What a pleasure talking with you, Andre, really. You too, guys. And be safe out there and uh, we'll talk real soon. All right. All right. Take, Take care. Thanks, guys. Uh -huh.